Hi everyone, this is the second of a series of videos I'm doing on our bedroom refurb. And standing here today in the freshly plastered room, it's difficult to imagine how it looked just a few weeks ago. When we were in a massive state with holes in the ceiling, wood chip, wallpaper we couldn't get off. So today I thought I'd just do a quick vid to show you how Gerard and I put new plasterboard on the ceiling prior to Gerard re-skimming the room. I've got Gerard back and uh, he's plastering our bedroom and uh, what we've got to do today is put plasterboard up on the ceiling because I have in a lot of the rooms in the past skimmed the ceilings but this ceiling I couldn't get the um, paper off it was in too bad a state you see here you've got these dreadful nails that are coming through and I wouldn't be doing Gerald any favours with his trowel trying to get him to skim over that so we're putting plasterboard up yeah, originally, originally they put uh, plasterboard in it and uh, just papered wood chips out of the plasterboard so you can't, you can't scrape it off. No. So the first job today was to find out where the where the ceiling, where the jo joists are in the ceiling and um, what I would have done is got a drill and just gone up rather sort of um, gently but Gerald's got a much better idea with his plaster of that hammer. Also called a drywall hammer, not available in every DIY store but if you hunt around you'll be able to find one. And then just knocking all that there, stick your finger up. Yeah. Because it's an old place, the, the timbers are all different sizes and then they're running out as well. Yeah, so if you don't do what Gerard's done, you might find halfway across the ceiling you've missed the timber because it's so there's another timber that's been, I don't know, joined onto it or something. Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. Because yeah. uh, if they run short on the timber, they'll fix another one on the side of it so the timber <coughs> will run out. Yeah. So that's all good. And the other advantage of doing this is it is pulling the ceiling up a bit, which is a massive relief to me because the ceiling you can literally... 9.5 plasterboard, there's loads of movement, you shouldn't use 9.5 plasterboard on the ceiling. But as you see, there's too much movement. Yeah, but this was oh, done in there. the 70s, so that's what they did back then. Yeah. You see here, that's where Gerard's excavated along here to find the joists. Got all these four lined plasterboard, which I didn't really need to use um, because Putting it all up onto existing plasterboard, there wasn't going to be a lot of great deal of moisture going through really. Yeah. Though, so it? that's only uh, normally for uh, bathrooms and kitchens anyway. Yeah. You've yeah. got moisture in the room to stop the timbers rotting. Yeah. But uh, at least it's a barrier anyway, moisture, moisture barrier. And when it's in your own house, sometimes you go a bit over the top on things and you don't need yeah. to. Now, in case you're wondering how we cut all the plasterboard in today's video, the process is really simple. I demonstrate on this off cut here, you take metal straight edge, in this case it's McAllister ruler but sometimes people use spirit levels. You mark off the piece of plasterboard that you need to cut and then with a Stanley knife like this one you're making several cuts across the piece of plasterboard and then it's simply a question of snapping it open and then cutting along the back of the piece of plasterboard like that. Well depending on the size of the sheet of plasterboard you're cutting it's often easier to turn it over onto the back like this and then score with a Stanley knife. So that's a good DIY way to do it but you'll often see the pros on sites they don't want to be faffing about with a with a metal ruler so what they often do is they, they get the standing knife on the tape measure and they simply score along like that to get their edge. Now that's fine for standard thickness plasterboard. Where you're using insulated plasterboard, you're gonna to have to use a saw, as you may have seen from my other videos. The other thing I use quite a lot is this uh, rasp planer. This is from Stanley. There are lots of different manufacturers that make them, and they come in as smaller sizes than this. And I find this is just a really good way to smooth the edge of the plasterboard, or alternatively, just to take a little bit more off if you find you haven't cut off enough. Well, now the other thing Gerard's done here, when we lifted the first sheet up, and I'll show you with the sheet in a minute, 
is he's used these nails. Yeah, clout nails. Clout nails. For, for quickness, just put yeah. like six tacks in, clout nails, he just pulls it up quickly and then puts screws in. Wherever the, the, the clout nails are, put a screw by the side of it because it'll just pull it up. And it pulls it up and then you can just bash the clout nail in further. Think, yeah. Which is brilliant because I would never have known that. I would have imagined that clout nails were quite an old fashioned thing to use and you'd use screws now, but yeah. actually using the both together is brilliant, isn't it? Mm, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And for the screws, I use these 60 millimeter drywall screws from British Gypsum and other makes are of course available. Getting the fiddly bits in. Bit of scribing. We've been really lucky in here. I thought I'd be up in the roof putting noggins in this morning. But luckily we've got noggins in all the right places. Yeah. The other issue is if we try to skim over this, you can see all the cracks on the ceiling up here. And I suppose a scrim tape that would have helped, but there's no guarantee they wouldn't have just reopened again, is there, Gerard? Yeah, so I but the, th the thing is, because it's 9.5, there's been a lot yeah. of damp in the, in the board over the yeah. years. Yeah. To skim over the top of that, you wouldn't get a good finish anyway. No, no. So, and it all moves. It all moves. It goes all over the place. And that is just, you know, it yeah. moves when you, when you press it, so. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. It pulls up. So as you can see here, you generally lay plasterboard sheets perpendicular to the joists. Where possible, trying to maximize the length of the plasterboard sheet and cutting it widthways to the center of the nearest joist. So that's it for today. I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please click on the like button below. As usual, in the description tab, I'll put links to all the tools I've used in today's video. So coming up, I've got more videos on this bedroom refurb. And in my next video, I finally found a DIY security camera that actually works. So stay tuned for that. And finally, as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking the link here.